soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this is gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. I was that right. Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I just like to kiss a woman's ass. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> He told me he had a vasectomy. I'm pregnant. Trail has been committed. Hit you with a bad yeah. pipe routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Of reason. Of reason. <laughs> it's Friday, bitches. I mean, people, it's Friday. The Voice of Reason Hot Button Radio is back in the building. I got my homeboy in the crib right now. We Come on, turn that man's mic off. We My homeboy, True Blue. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. (laughs) Time time is more than a magazine. I'm going to tell you right now. Time is more than a magazine. Oh, he's going to be DJing for us today, y'all. Y'all have no idea, man. We about to cut up in here. Ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know how we get down. This is a caller-driven show, so it's important that you get to your phone lines right now because we get the craziest topics anybody could ever imagine. The number to dial is 844-55-1. That's 844-55-1. If you don't know where you are, you are on Hot Button Radio. Hot Button Radio, of course, is right inside that Dash Radio app. Why do I say this? Because folks be straight bootlegging these these shows and putting them on YouTube and everything. So, listen, if you want to listen to the show live, this is what you got to do. You got to download that damn app. Where did they go to get the app? Do you know? Apple? Apple Store? Store. Google Play? Yep. Right? Or right on the website, on the internet, www.radio.com. That's right. We can get on the internet and get it too, huh? Right on your desktop, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So do that, and then we get right to the topic. Before, let me just introduce everybody who's in the building right now. We've got, with a new haircut. (laughs) (laughs) Who was the Fonz's girlfriend? That would be Pinky Tuscadero. Pinky Tuscadero is up in this bitch right now. In the form of Red Panda. I feel so free. I'm telling you, it's some Pat Benatar energy going on. (laughs) It's fresh, though. She cut her hair. It's like mohawky and spiky. I feel liberated. It's fresh. Thanks. Welcome. Happy Friday, guys. Ford. Yes. And then from the Rick James School of Hairdos. Mm -hmm. Look at, look at, look at. Wait, did you see her Hold face? The fuck up. Can we get a camera in here to see my face? Because I'm about to jump across this. I'm man, saying, so. your hair looks very nice. Mm. It is Whitney you. Tabor with the braids, like one of the Mary Jane girls up in this motherfucker. Mm. 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 If y'all can see her, who, who's periscoping right now? Put oh, her on periscope. periscope. I'm about to periscope. Man. I love yeah. periscope. I ain't been on it. Well, hey guys, happy Friday and happy 9-11 day. It's not always got to be sad, y'all. We can we can be sad for a second, but can y'all call me at 1-844-55-1 and wish your girl a happy birthday. Why I'm not? just saying. It's we having a great day. day here. I'm excited to be here and a great topic, So Thank you for doing a dope topic that I'm going to turn up on Chris. for my birthday. Good Chris. Chris. This I've been waiting for this topic. We haven't done this on Dash yet, so I'm real happy. Yeah, it's so, going to be crazy. Just get to your phone lines now, because it's going to be fire. And now, my girl in the studio right now. Yes. You know who she is. Jokes galore. Funny. <laughs> knowledge. The whole nine yards. Tell them who you are and why they should know you. Yes. Guys, this is Arana Lopez checking in all the way from the 773 Chi-Town. Chi-Town. He didn't even mention I'm in here rocking the Michael Jackson bad hairstyle. You know, I'm killing these hoes. You hear me? I got the <laughs> the fresh Frisco 1989. She's stupid. 
Do you understand what I'm working with? All I need is a leather jumpsuit because I'm ready to get down. Welcome to the show. Make sure y'all call in. 844-55-1. Okay, and on the phone line, y'all know who she is. She going to drop straight bombs from her underarms. It's just what she does. She's cold-blooded. I'm telling you, we got a Virgo triad in the building right now. Ladies Yay, and gentlemen. Yay, a Virgo trifecta. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Yes, without further ado, you know who she is, Veronica Conway. What up, VC? Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up? What's up, Virgo? Happy birthday, Whitney, Thank Virgo you, child. Thank you, VC. Yes, yes. Hey, today's topic is crazy. Fake cakes? I don't understand. What... Fake cakes. Now, Chris came up with this, but it's pretty good. As are our ass shots and bl- and breast augmentations becoming the death of the naturally thick woman. Fake cakes. Why do men fall head over heels for even fake booties? And ugh, we got questions, of course. Uh, this is going to get crazy. So get to your phone lines right now but while you still have a chance. Are today's white women more appreciative of Sarah Bartman than black women are? Mm. Ugh. That was hurtful. Mm. I, mm. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> is analingus the new cunnilingus? <laughs> People running around asking to get their groceries, eh? I'm just saying, eat the cake like groceries. (laughs) Is pop culture's big booty trend bad or good for women's overall self-esteem? You know, body image in women is real touchy-feely. I remember years ago, a white woman wouldn't be caught dead with a fat ass. Fat, a big booty meant you fat for white women back in the day. Now... Who's responsible? Is Kim Kardashian responsible for the booty revolution? Is J-Lo responsible for the booty revolution? Who's, is Beyonce? Her body is bootylicious. I'm just, I'm just saying, who's responsible for the booty bust? Or the, the booty bust, Jesus. <laughs> that nigga did just get out of jail, didn't he? <laughs> Remember the dude from... From prison, nope. and then they made a character out of him on the boondocks. Oh, yeah. That nigga's free. Oh, shit. <laughs> that nigga's <is> out. <laughs> the booty bandit is free? Booty the bandit. booty bandit Damn, is Gina. free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny by itself. <laughs> True or false? Both men and women see women as parts while they see men as a whole. You know, men look at tits, men look at ass, but women see the whole man. Is that true? Chris said he found that somewhere. I don't know. Why is Kim Kardashian worshipped as a curvy goddess while Serena Williams is viewed as Joanna Man? Oh, y'all don't play my girl. I'm just saying. Let me just open it up for discussion. (laughs) Who wants to deal with that right now? Get to your phone lines, 844-55-1. Uh, Pat Benatar, Ashanti? Who's Pat Benatar? Some old lady. The man. 80s. That's You'll play it, right? Shit. We are young. Love is a battlefield. Mm-hmm. You ain't never heard that? I don't think so. Damn wow. it. Wow, she looks just like her. But what do you think, Ashanti, being a woman um, with... Naturally with curves. A, a naturally think, curvy... Well, just to go back to... Posterior. I guess the base of the conversation <laughs> are women with implants pretty much putting thick women out of the game. I don't think so. I think we all have a market. You know, I have small titties and a big ass. There's a market for that. Brazil. Brazil. Girls that have big titties and no ass. There's a market for that. I think... What? Honest, Girls with big titties and no ass. There's a market for that. Y'all better chill because that's me. I'm in that box. You have a strong Gina you got, you got muscle ass. Yeah, like medium, like <laughs> yes. medium yeah, You got, oh, you got a Gina booty oh, for sure. Shit, man, I'm cool. <laughs> got a medium little booty. I'm with it. I think there's a market for, for every size and shape. But just to speak to the Serena Williams and Kim Kardashian, I have no fucking idea. To me, Serena Williams is bomb. Her whole everything, her body, her cut, her shape, everything. To me, Kim Kardashian looks disgusting. 
So I don't know. You guys are going to have to take the cake on that one. Whitney? <laughs> oh, man, y'all don't want this. We do. Yeah, you do. Look, these fake booty bitches are literally ruining the everything about women. Like, I'm so mm. sorry. These I've literally seen fake ass implants flip upside down. Like, mm-hmm. I just want to know. I need everybody to call me in. Men, what the fuck are y'all doing? Does that feel good? Like, I need to know how it feels. Like, That's a good question. Really, what's going on? Because I've seen a girl twerk upside down with her fake booty, and it just flipped upside down on some Whoa. weirdo shit. Yeah, y'all. Really? See, pff, no. I'm trying to tell you. It's literally weird as fuck. <laughs> Veronica? I, I'm not with it. <laughs> yeah. Veronica? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I think, I, think I think it's just a function of how women have been trained in deep self-hatred. I mean, there is nothing that is in, if a woman is inherently, a woman is inherently female and there's, and there's really not a lot she needs to do in general to be more female, right? She, but, but because, because, because the beauty industry, the beauty industrial complex makes so much money off of women's insecurity and their fear about body mm. type, um, then it's just a profit center for a lot of people to get very, very rich. And in the meanwhile, it's making, women go crazy and lose their minds and and destroy their bodies, putting stuff into their bodies that their bodies were not designed for. Arana. I feel like big women are winning now more than ever. Shout out to all you fake booty broads putting them ass shots in your body because you are making a woman like myself who is naturally gifted feel Uh-oh. like a fucking unicorn in these streets. Uh-oh. Do you know how impressive I am when a oh, man right. knows that I am all 100? Do you know how erections happen on fleek? <laughs> erections because I walked past and it's all me? Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing gonna replace the ass jiggle. It's like Visa. It's everywhere you wanna be. <laughs> all right? <laughs> <laughs> Often you know duplicated, but never imitated. You know, I'm imitated, but never duplicated. That's what oh. I meant to say. Shout out Listen, to Nicki Minaj. Really quickly, what is uh, your Instagram? Because there was a bikini situation that I happened to stumble upon. Of course. Yes. Accidentally. Oh, no. It, it was broadcast for today specifically to, for you to like, download ooh. the Dash app. <laughs> but you need to go ahead and hit up at Arana Lopez 100 at A-A-R-O-N-A L-O-P-E-Z 100 because that's the way I keep it on IG. Holla at you, girl. I'm just saying this shit was crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Shanti is the same way. Whitney be damn near butt naked. I want to hear from the callers right now. Are you a booty person or or a chesticle person or both? I, I like proportion. I like it all, so... Call us and let us know. Do you prefer Kim Kardashian? A lot of men are going inside out over Kim Kardashian. Is she that hot? Is her ass that great? Did you see the picture where they said, uh, what was it, the break the internet picture? Did y'all that see that? That was lame. And that um, was so photoshopped, bro. The paper magazine? Hey. You said you would eat it? Who said that? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. You can't mm-hmm. beat an exotic bitch with a big ass. I'm sorry. You That's can't? the reason you cannot. What That's- are you talking? Brazil? You ain't been to Brazil, girl? Let, what, let, me, what, let me tell you the basis person. of her appeal. Let me tell you the basis of her appeal. She wasn't even the star in the video. Ray J was the star. That he was. Ray J had the star multi-Grammy winning sister. But she showed up and was interesting. You know how many bitches go into porn to try to win and lose? He Lawrence was- Fishburne daughter. Yes. Huh? The, the, the teen pregnancy girl. Right. Oh, right. But she made a off of a sex tape because she is interesting. You can't come with curves, chest, and some chinky eyes and we don't really understand if you kind of Middle Eastern or some type of Spanish. It's interesting. Beyonce is interesting. She black, we know, but it's like, oh, but you kind of Creole and there's something going, it's interesting. There's J-Lo a little is massa in you. Interesting. Yeah. And that's the problem that Serena Williams has because she has straight black features. You just said Serena Williams wasn't interesting. That's what that's I That's what feel. I just heard. I, I just heard it. You too. can run okay. with it. You can, you can listen. Listen to me. Somebody my better get personal, to the phone lines. My personal feelings are this. I love Serena Williams, and Serena Williams makes me feel good because she got that don't, and she keep it in shape. 
So it gives me body goals. But see, I don't want them arms she got because she look like she'll choke hold you in 2.2 <laughs> seconds. I'm just saying no man wants to get behind that and then feel like he can be the prisoner. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh. You want but, a sex mate, not a sale mm-hmm. mate. Um, nah, I'm going to have to disagree with that because Drake, one of the top money-making, most sought-after niggas in the world, is all over Serena and has been all over Serena. It's just I'm, his turn. He been already had a turn. This is his second turn. What are you talking about? He been fucking Serena. It's Y'all a pussy are... go round. No, no, no. For no. celebrities. No, Come no, 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 no. All I'm saying is men don't fuck with Serena Williams because they're intimidated by Serena Williams because she's better than these she niggas. She just said the same I, thing. I, she looks like she's showing the hell out of She has buff arms is what she just said. All I'm saying is this bitch is a winner. She's killing these motherfuckers on every level. That's why they don't think she's sexy. Can I say this about Kim K, though? Because we're not really giving Kim K her rightful credit. You going to tell us her talent? I'm Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying that she has a talent. Well, actually, she has like some little video game or something like that, right? No? I'm not saying that Kim K has a talent, but she does look good. And she is a strong woman just like all her other sisters. I mean, you have to be pretty strong, I imagine, to be a Kardashian. So let's give her let's give her, her body a little is shaped credit. like an ant. Her body is nasty. I actually thought she was prettier before she got all the work done. Really. You know how ants have them real big fat booties Stupid. and their skinny legs? Like how is that Bugs even life. popular? Now they're giving them, they're giving these ladies credit for making the fat ass popular. That what was J Lo. Nick, Nick Young's girl, what's her name? Iggy Iggy Iggy. They're giving her credit for it. They're giving Khloe Kardashian credit for it. They're giving Kim credit for it. With all of these fat booty sisters walking around, how could they ever decide to give credit for fat juiciness? I'm serious. I, I wouldn't say they're giving them credit. I would say that they're popularizing it. They're using them how can as you a vehicle. popularize the ass. Listen. I say that sisters got the patent on the booty. That's the way I feel. That's what I know to be in my life. But I feel like by them being the scapegoat, so to speak, it's showing white America, hey, ass is okay. Just go and let it happen. Go and let your ass happen. Just let it happen. Let go of that. Put down them fat jeans. Embrace this. It's here to stay. You're asking something very interesting. And I'm going to go to Veronica. They've always said that the white woman was kryptonite to the black man. Now, what mm-hmm. is a white woman a woody? with a perfectly shaped ass on top of it? Veronica, how well, can the black fool, man a, resist a fool, such temptation? His money will soon be a fool, and his money will still will soon be parted. So, uh, you know, I think that cultural appropriation, which has always been something that we've done, here, that white folks have done in this country, they don't have culture, so they take ours. And they appropriate it, and when they can take it and monetize it and turn it into industries, then they do that when it's convenient for them. Because, believe me, being black ain't convenient in this country, but, you know, having a fat <laughs> ass is convenient. And, but when you can take it and have people emulate Kim K's ass, because the thing is, it'd be different if it was real. But it's totally not a, it's not a real ass. I so want how, some, but how I does want... that get celebrated and revered as something that is beautiful in this in this world? I think that's... I think it's crazy. Wow. I want somebody to call in who's actually experienced a fake ass and let us know what it feels like. I Can you tell us? Can you describe it? Does the cellulite feel the same way? Can you feel the subtle ripples of the stretch marks along the hip area? You know the hip area. You know, I'm just saying, does all of that still feel right or does it feel like a bag of quinoa? Or does it feel like Mr. <laughs> Potato Head? Just as <laughs> soon as you stick it in, stuff right. just fall off. Oh, God. So listen, <laughs> let's do this. I've got some calls. Let's get into the callers. People are calling like crazy. Let's go to line three real quick. Virginia, David, you're on the voice of reason. Holler at us. What's up, Zoe? What's what up, up man? Chilling, brother. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Um, I have a very curvaceous wife. And let me tell you, it's nothing, it's nothing like it. And the beauty of it is, like, I get to walk behind her and watch her walk. And I think, to me, that's the most beautiful thing, especially about um, 
black women. It's something about black women. Black women have flavor. Black women have style. And they're the most, to me, copied, uh, copied people oh, that's good. in the world. Okay. I can see that. I, yeah. Hey, so you're yeah. telling me yeah. that they're the most copied, yet at the same time, the most hated on. Because Serena yeah. gets hated on. Yes, she does. Is Serena, yes, let's does. just, can we go here, David? Can we go here? Ladies, can we go? Is Serena ugly? Yeah. I think to white man, <laughs> I think to white man she is. And that's why no. they playing her like to that. To you, though. So. To you. No. no. I think Serena dope. No. But I, she, is she pretty, though? He Y'all dancing. We're not in Miss America. Is she cute or <laughs> not? Arana, go. She's not exotic. She so I she's not cute. So she's not cute. She pretty to me. I say she pretty. So you like lights? I think she has a gorgeous body, and I think she's dope. But you telling I, me I she's think, not cute? I I don't think Serena Williams is cute. Oh, no, uh, David no. from Virginia. You know what? I Speak think it's the it. eyebrows. She's not, she hey, I'll put it like this: she's not as cute as the ladies in the panel <laughs> or Veronica. Good, I'll good put answer. It that way. Right. Is colorism affecting our ability to judge her true beauty? Eight four four fifty five dash one. Veronica Conway, do you think Serena Williams is beautiful? I happen to think so. I, I, I do. I, I, but I happen to love African features. I happen to love mm-hmm. and embrace beautiful chocolate African features on women and men. So, I, so I, I think that I think that part of it is that our, our, I think our consciousness has been tipped that we only view. The more you, you know, in our subconscious, the more European the features, the better. The straighter the hair, the better, right? We've been kind right. of programmed and conditioned, and the whole planet has it. That's the beauty standard. So I think, I think we are always looking through that lens and that prism of, of a European beauty standard. So I don't know. I like it African, personally. Hey, David, I appreciate the call, man. Thank you for reaching out. You brought your city into the building, Virginia. I was going to say vagina is the first city in the building. But... It is Virginia. <laughs> we appreciate the call. Thanks again. Let me ask this question. Get to your phone lines right now. Are white women more obsessed with the black woman's ass, right? Or is the black woman more obsessed with the white woman's blonde hair? 844-55-1. You know I don't give a fuck. I'm going to ask these questions. <laughs> you, know, great question. you know I'm going to ask. That's a great question. I'm just saying, right? Y'all want to y'all want to deal with that? I'm Ashanti? Right. But aren't there aborigines that have blonde hair? Hey, every feature in existence can be found in Africa. Period. I personally yeah. think that blonde hair looks better on our skin tone. Mm. To be honest with you. So I don't know if if it's black women being obsessed with white women features. What about Nene Leaks? <sighs> She's just a bad example. Mm. That's a Loves. terrible example. So <laughs> Uh, Zoe loves Nene, uh, by the way. Marana, just for the yeah. record, Zoe loves Nene Lee. She does. <laughs> she, the, she the wrong example she of that's what happens when niggas get money. Man, <laughs> I'm sorry. White women love our asses because our you niggas want them to have our asses. That's really what it is. Can I? Go These ahead. bitches are obsessed with our men and they can easily get them by just buying a new ass because they ain't fucking with us. So there you go. Just in terms of look or looks, appearances, I was reading this article. I don't know if it was last week or whatever the case. And they now have uh, the ability to change your child's eye color when they're inside of your stomach. Mm -mm. Like if you want your child Mm -hmm. to have green eyes or blue eyes or whatever the case, you could pay the money and make the decision Mm. for your baby to, to turn out a certain way. And for me, it's just really sad because it's like, damn, you want all of us to just fucking look alike. Pretty soon it's just going to be like children of the corn running around everywhere. Man, can they? <laughs> I guarantee by the time I have kids, they're going to be Seriously. able to alter my baby's booty. So my kids going to come out looking thick as shit. It's hey. crazy, man. I think it's hip hop. I think the hip hop movement, I think rap videos yeah. have popularized ass all together. To the, hey, turn uncut. around, stick it out. Even white boys got to shout, baby got mm-hmm. back was the battle cry of 1990. It's 2015. That's 20 years mm-hmm. of asking for the ass. Yeah. That's what happened. That's why everybody wants it. That's why it's popular now. And to speak about Serena Williams, I think she is beautiful. I just think it's them goddamn arms. 
When you saw Serena Williams and coming together, you was like, if she bear hug him from the back, that's this. <laughs> she do got like you can see Bo Jackson shoulders. It's it's, it's so intimidating. She's right, an because she's an athlete. She's a fucking athlete. She's a tennis player. What the fuck y'all want her she's to do? Athlete. Listen, get, wait a minute. She should get reductions, arm reductions. Wait a minute. Let's remember though. Let's let's remember. I'm old enough to remember Martina Navratilova. You remember her? That white woman from Germany who looked like Dolph yeah. Lundgren, like I, I must break yeah. you. She was like a machine. Hilarious. She had veins and shit popping out. But I remember, I was young enough to remember. Nobody was really like, you look like a man, Dolph. But then she later on, I think she she came out as a lesbian in the eighties. I think. Mm-hmm. I could be making up shit. Don't mm-hmm. don't follow a damn thing. I'm. Saying. I don't think Serena looks like a man at all. I don't. She doesn't. I don't. I think she got ass. I think everything is proportioned. I just think the arms are a little intimidating. That's well, all. And literally this conversation I've had multiple times because I was naturally born with an athletic body like most black people are. So I've been body shamed multiple times because I had abs in the sixth grade, because I had cut arms in the sixth grade, because I was also an athlete. Honestly, I appreciate her because I wouldn't have my schmedium booty without basketball, without doing jump shots since I was six years old. So I commend her and your buff ass arms. I like it. You're still a woman. I don't think Not Serena she Williams. Hugging you. Stupid. <laughs> I don't think Serena Williams is ugly. She's just not my cup of tea, which is neither here nor there. Like everyone is allowed to have their own preference. What's wrong is body shaming her body when you know that you're really just jealous of her body. And I feel like white people have been doing that to us since the beginning of time. They've been making us oh, yeah. feel bad about shit. That's beautiful. Yeah. So then we're self conscious, and then they turn around and make some fucking machine so that they can get the same shit. That's the Speak problem it, with Shanti. it. That's the problem with it. You know I will I mean? kill him for you, brother. Exactly. Your sister, Serena. No, I'm just. <laughs> That's real shit. Just like that Asian guy that wrote that article that blew up about how black women are ugly. Like, well, was he right? Eight four four fifty five dash one. Well, when I ask this next question, we'll see. Get to your lines, man. It's about to get crazy. Can the self-esteem of a woman of color be found in her makeup kit? No. Ugh, Jesus. <laughs> y'all y'all be acting funny style. Y'all know y'all won't go to the to the to the to the corner store. Some people be saying they they don't all natural, no filter, but you know good and well y'all not doing that. Sometimes. I say no. How are you yeah, dressed you, when you do that? You how am I dressed when I'm you natural? You got on a cape? You guys have seen me in your natural. You got on a sunshine hat that just covers your whole body. <laughs> Tell the truth. Hey. The truth, in my opinion, is that they make makeup and we put all this makeup on our face and it fucks up our skin. So then we just need to keep buying it and buying it and buying it. That's how I feel about makeup. However, sometimes when I want a finishing touch, I want some fucking blueberry lips. I put Ooh, on some blueberry. makeup. So wait a minute. Now you're about to tell me <laughs> that there's crack cocaine off top in the makeup and you got to wear it. Sometimes you just want a little top off, you know? <laughs> a top off? Veronica. <laughs> I do a top off. Veronica, what has yes. the beauty industrial complex done? What has it done to the sisters? Speaking. It's made a lot of money. It's made a lot of money. I mean, you know, I think that we don't oftentimes need as much makeup as our North melanated counterparts because the way our skin our skin doesn't age as massively as theirs does and as rapidly as theirs does. And so I think that there's a real, I think we kind of hold our form, if we take good care of ourselves, we hold our form quite beautifully. Um, I think that, you know, I mean, and I wear my makeup from time to time, I, I do, but as an, you know, as a complex, I think we have to always understand who profits. So they make a lot of money on it, all the, all the surgery, all the cosmetics. It's just it's just what it is. So let me ask, and then I'm gonna go to Arana. Do you think little girls know that Nicki Minaj's ass is fake? No. And if they do know, what do you what does that say to them and their real ass? Like, mm-hmm. do you think they know Kim K's ass is fake? I think the jury is out on that. I don't think uh, 
Little people girls know. are paying attention now. Well, here's the thing. I think older girls or teenage girls kind of know because you can just go on YouTube and see those earlier videos where she had the flat cakes right. with the womp, womp, womp bottom. <laughs> You know, so it's like, okay, five years ago, you was past puberty. We know you bought that. But a young girl coming up, she may think that that's all her. So I don't I don't feel as though I don't feel as though it's harmful. If if she got the right parents, she can overcome anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. I think Mm -hmm. young girls do know. And I think that's what's fucking scary about it. Like, I have a little sister. She's fucking gorgeous. And she stays picking herself apart based on how mm-hmm. many likes she gets Ooh. on her last Instagram page. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This girl told me she wanted to get Botox in her hands because she has sweaty hands. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think what's scary is that they do know. They definitely they definitely mm-hmm. know. And my thing is, they're, the society is saying it's okay to do this. It's okay on every level. Iggy, we got the Mm -hmm. Kim K, we have the black women doing it. Black women, we don't even need to wear makeup or do any of this. They're trying to be like us. But now we have, I literally see black girls trying to get lip injections. And I'm like, bitch, your Mm -hmm. lips are big as fuck now. What are you doing? Like, Arana? I think we just created a culture where people aren't happy with themselves. I really don't think makeup or plastic surgery specifically is a color issue. I think everybody is just, especially in the world of social media, they feel more insecure because they have eyes watching and they want to be perfect on every level. Right now, ass is in, so that's what everybody wants. But before the focus was on ass, it was on big boobs. And people wanted oh, big yeah. boobs whether they had a flat ass or yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just... We want to be in vogue. We want to be wanted. We want to matter. So, listen, we got to take a quick Mm -hmm. break. But when we come back, we're going to continue down this shithole. I mean, rabbit hole. Bunghole. I mean, today's topic, fake cakes. (laughs) The rise of these fake ass booties. But apparently people love them. Before we go to break, let me just say this. President Obama has a 17-year-old daughter, right? Going on 18. She doesn't look enhanced at all. She looks like a normal 17-year-old kid. But what about the young Kardashian sister? What's her name? Kylie? Hailey? Whatever, Kylie? Yeah, Jesus. She's out there like, ugh. I'm just saying, does that affect these young kids? Kids model themselves after what they see in the media. Listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will continue. My homeboy, True Blue. What up? Give us this fat booty mix, man. (laughs) Hey, this is Zoe Williams, and you're listening to The Voice of Reason on Hot Button Radio. And we're back on Dash. Happy Friday, everybody. We're in here discussing body shaming between black women and white women. Do you think Serena Williams is hot? Or do you think Kim K is hot? Can they potentially both be hot? I have a question for the panel. Has R&B, hip-hop, and trap music caused white women to begin swaggerjacking black women's style? You damn right. Yeah, and our brothers it. falling for it. These niggas is tripping fast. Maybe white women just nicer than y'all. Ugh, gross. Eight four four fifty. Maybe white women got enough money to get ass implants, and I can't afford that shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> ask Atlanta. Atlanta got booty, booty shots on fleek. I they walking this, around with cartoon booties down there. I saw this funny ass meme the other day because Zoe just said, is it because black women are meaner? The meme had a black woman up top and a white woman at the bottom. And a guy came to the black woman and was like, hi, what's your name? And the black girl was like, why? And then he went to the white girl and was like, hi, what's your name? And she's like, hi, my name is Katie. And I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> You've you done actually done the why? Like, why are you asking me what my name is? For what? Wow. See, change your attitude. See? I've done that See? before. I'm just saying. Are we mean shaming black women or are they deservant of the title? Or are white women more tolerable to your guys' disrespectful asses? Maybe saying hi to you isn't disrespectful. No, 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 uh, Veronica. I didn't say that specifically, <laughs> but... Y'all niggas is real disrespectful to black women, but you guys will roll out the red carpet for a white girl. I've seen that. Kanye is jumping on couches. Wait, was that Tom Cruise? That was Tom Cruise. Nah, like, whatever. These niggas is doing crazy shit everywhere. I don't know what Zoe's doing. <laughs> oh, I'm just over here. She <laughs> is just dancing. <laughs> this Drew nigga took it back. Took it back. Took so it listen, back, this is back. what we're going to do. Veronica, has it always been this way? 
black women come up with a style. Did you guys see recently this? Uh, now there's this thing where white women can make their hair into afros. Have yeah. you seen that, Veronica? Mm-hmm. Is it afro? No, shade? I haven't seen that, but that's that's pretty crazy. About? And dreads. The, I'm saying I've heard that black women or white women now have this process where they could get a smooth blowout like back in the day, like the Silvers and the Jacksons. It's real shit right now. And they doing it in Japan, too. Have you seen it in Asia? Yeah, where the Asians is really doing it like, pow. But you know what? Those same Asian people be like, don't go over there and fuck with the niggas. Don't fuck with the niggas. Dude, I'd be scared of an Asian bitch with afro. That was scary shit out of me. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, don't. Listen. Have you guys heard about Miss Japan? The girl that's, that's as they call it, haiku. She's black and, and Japanese. And she won Miss Japan. And, like, all the Japanese is pissed because she's half black. They say I'm, she's not Japanese. I bet you she's gorgeous, though. She's so phenomenal. I bet. I bet. Veronica, do you think it's just easier to co-opt our culture than it is to integrate us as a people? Because the stereotype is us as a people are too violent to be integrated, right? So, well, well fuck it. Let them create really the culture it. and then we'll just jack the culture. Do you think it's Correct. like that? Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's swagger jacking. It's always been swagger jacking. But the reason that they can't don't integrate with us is because they don't, it's all about keeping the black man from fucking the white woman. That's what racism is essentially designed for. Because what happens is after a few generations, the gene pool ceases to, the white gene pool ceases to exist because it's a recessive gene. So they don't keep, they don't keep us separate because we're quote unquote violent. They keep us separate because of our sexuality. Right? And it's not, it's about the black man and the white woman fucking. And that's all it's ever been about. And so, uh, yeah, so it's easier to hijack the culture and to be like, and you know, to be swagalicious and, you know, <laughs> talk and shit like you're a homie and do all, it's easier to do that than actually have to deal with black people directly. Interesting. Let's go to Wisconsin, line four. Speak on it. Yo. Yo, what up, Mike? Yo, what's happening? You hear me? Yeah, what's up with the yo, cheese yo, over there? Like, I, I mean, it's, yo, it's, it's gravy, but I'm just going to say, y'all, right off the rip, I'm from Alabama. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that whole Molly Cyrus thing with the twerk and how they be swagger jacking, I've been seeing that since, you know what I'm saying, 95 South 69 boys. Ain't nothing new. That's just what they like to do. But like you said, it's much easier for them to take what's ours because we're a little more... Uh, interested in being uh, integrated into culture, American culture as a whole, whereas, you know, they ain't really trying to hear all of that, but what we do is cool, right? So, like, the whole, you know, like, doing with the whole butt shots and everything, and it's like, okay, so there are black women that don't really have fat asses, right? Okay, cool. I was going to say that. When, uh, when, when... You know, the whole thing was like, all right, white women were like, you know, fat asses are out. We ain't, we ain't doing that. And then somebody that's kind of in between, which is where the whole Kim Kardashian thing came from. That's that whole exotic nature. You can't tell if she black. You can't tell if she white. You don't know who, what the fuck she is. So she can identify and cross over to both platforms. So then the white girls was like, oh, shit, she's hot. And then the black girls are like, oh, shit, she's hot. And now we have... Now we have a, a, a tie that binds both of them. So the white girls are like, yo, I'm going to go do these ass shot things. And they, they jump off. And then the black girls are like, oh, shit, I could get ass too. You know, my girls that had ass, I got five homegirls. They had ass forever. Niggas was running behind them forever. And, and ain't nobody ran behind me. But now I can get ass shots. I can do that too. And it's like, it ain't necessary. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, Boost Mobile. He was about Thanks to for calling, man. We appreciate it. Thanks. I want to play go. Devil's Advocate. Well, well, let's we got, we got these callers. Let's get them. Play Devil's Advocate. We gonna get some of that. Nicole, Los Angeles, line three. Do you have a fat juicy, or is your booty made in a factory? Speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, you're on the Voice of Reason. Hello. Holler at us. What's up, Nicole? Hello. Hello. Is me is am I on? Yes. Live. Oh, sorry, Joe. In hi, front everybody. of millions. Hi everybody. How are you hi. doing? Hey. hey. Had me on hold a really long time. Oh, okay, we're so sorry, baby. The last one, the last caller. Hello. Yeah, we're listening. Yeah, the last caller, um, yeah, I don't really agree with all of that because 
that's just ridiculous. But um, I agree with a lot of other things you were saying before, but you have to basically do like what Veronica says, like most of the time, is living your truth. And with the with black women, you have to live in this unadulterated, unmasked essence at least 50% of the time. I know it's difficult here in L.A. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm originally from South Carolina. So the beauty standard is completely blowing my mind out here. Like, mm-hmm. it's so many mm-hmm. around. around. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Wow. But, for instance, for me personally, in my job, I'm the only black woman in the whole department. And as a postdoc, I'm a researcher. So it, it's really difficult because... Most of the women there are Asian, East Indian. Um, we have a few French, uh, Canadian, things like that. But I can see them. I can actually feel them, like, hating hard. Mm. And I'm like, well, I, I'm, I don't even see myself that way, but they see me that way. And so and the idea in their mind is wait a minute. on this whole... Nicole, wait a minute. Are you saying that because you got shape and curves... <laughs> That other women of other ethnicities within your work environment hate on you or maybe even project this over sexual watch her because she too cute. She too this and that. That ass is too fat. We got to get her up out of here. Is that what you're saying is your experience? It's not that far, but it's like they literally will. They touch a lot. They, they, they touch. They touch your booty? Uh, other cultures are different. So they they will say, oh, my hair my hair is in braids right now. But, like, maybe next week it'll be an afro. Or maybe the next week it'll be twist or something. They like to touch. They like, they, I think it's like a, a fetishize. Like, it's a fetish to them. Almost. What is that, like, velvet? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. No, that's crazy. Like fish, and I feel like a doll. Every day it's like, oh, my God, I don't want to look like a doll. But then again, I don't want to look like a bum. So it's like, okay, I can't I can't get out of that cycle of being a doll to them. But it's just me. Like, I go home, it's like, okay, there's hundreds of other people that look just like me. Uh, you know, but that, you know, act like me, have the same culture. But I come here, and I'm in my job, and they're just like, oh, it's me. Oh, it's Nicole. Oh, you know. It's like I'm on display every day. It's, it's, it's really one of them works funny. with us. <laughs> huh? We have one that works with us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and she's not like the idea, the stereotype that we thought of before we came here. You know that whole thing. And oh, she's into I don't know yoga, sushi. I'm, I'm into the different different things. So they're like, what? You know, I can't believe this. What? Oh my god. You know, it, wow. It's just, it's really weird. Well, listen, Nicole, let me just say you brought L.A. into the building. We appreciate you taking the time and also hanging on. Your patience is appreciated. Thank you for calling the voice of reason. Oh, yeah. Call back any time. So, so I hmm? wanted to say something. Yes. Um, I got your, your book, so I'm going to take my time and read through it and, and not try to rush. I'm usually rushing through books, so I'm going to really focus on um, going through relationship dismount girl you done earned yourself an extra 45 seconds of conversation oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this nigga though oh jesus and, uh, love you Whitney love you too <laughs> thank you though I appreciate that mm-hmm. always support that book okay. man it's a meaningful work and uh thank man thanks I appreciate it Ashanti you had a statement to make and then a runner at least white women support each other mm. you know what I mean Ooh. black women don't black women don't support each other yoink I could walk into a room full of black women and be looking good as Listen. I usually try to keep it and they will have weird funky energy about them. I walk in a room full of white women, half of them may be hating cuz they're intimidated and maybe a little fearful, but the other half will be all for it. <gasps> You're gorgeous. I love that. Where would you get that from? At least white women support one another more so than black women do. Interesting. Whitney I hella agree with Ashanti. That is crazy. Nah, I'm I'm, I literally, I ain't got shit to say because it, that <laughs> is the damn truth. I'm just going to be 1,000. Like, the light skin beef is real in the streets. It's been a 10 year decade for me, or however old I just turned. But I'm saying, <laughs> these bitches is out here hating mm-hmm. for real. White women don't fuck with me, black women don't fuck with me. So mm. I definitely. I definitely get it. Arana and then Veronica. I think it's an issue of low self-esteem and voyeurism. 
I think everybody is attracted to or interested or curious about the other. Black people are curious about white people in that way. And white people are curious about us in that way. White people aren't the only people that fetishize us. I mean, granted, we're cool. When things are in vogue, it's called the new black. That's the new black. And we made booty profitable. We made booty cool. Back that ass up. Miss Fat Booty. uh, Booty delicious. You felt like if you didn't have an ass, you weren't in the group. You weren't cool. And so... You want to add, you want to be down with the hip stuff. And when somebody comes around you and they got ass, it's exciting. You want to taste, touch, fit. How did you do that? Did they make that? Did Duncan Hines do that? Or is it fake cakes or whatever the fuck? Oh, but my it's just like black people when we uh, fetishize Scarface and Italian mafia. It's, nobody want to talk about that. But we, we look at other cultures. We invite them into our world, right? Wow. We put our hip hop out there. And then if they like it, we go, no, you can't like it. It's our shit. But you put it out there. And then you yes. want to be Scarface yes. and you want to be a rapper, but they can't like cakes. Wow. They can't be interested. Stop being insecure. Own yes. your shit. Veronica, come on in here. Jesus. Get a piece of this. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, listen, it's, it, it'd be different if we had power. So we don't have power in, uh, and we, and we're, and because a, a fool and his money are soon, are soon parted and easily parted, even in the hip hop industry, we eventually sold, that got sold out, right? We sold that out. In other mm-hmm. words, it used to be political, it used to be powerful, it used to be pro black, and then, and then as, as, as other cultures got a hold of it, and started dictating what we could, you know, sell to our own people, it became more corrosive and divisive and misogynist and it became all this other stuff because it was really, it really be, it deteriorated so that it could destroy us. So I, we, unfortunately, we don't take and maintain control of even our own industries that were created by us. We let other people come in and dictate how we should be. So uh, I would say, you know, if we had power, relative to other cultures, real economic and political power, which we don't, um, then that would be a little bit different. Then we then, then, then the cultural something. appropriation wouldn't the cultural appropriation wouldn't sting so much. It's almost like it's the last thing that we have because everything else has been taken from us, including the continent of Africa, including all of our industries, and it's the last thing that we have left and I think at some point it's like, you know what, could y'all not take that too? Wow. Veronica saying mm-hmm. something really powerful here. I, I urge somebody out there, um, start a corporation. Fat asses are us. Just let's, we have to do something, a nonprofit organization, something where we can capitalize and monetize all of the stuff that's us. Don't you, don't, don't you hate it when you, you look around and you go, we created hip hop, but we don't own it or control it. Now, I, I, I see what Jay-Z is doing. Jay-Z is title and you know all of that yeah but he had to make a whole bunch of money in their system make them super uber uber wealthy but and then, then he had to break right. away and now he's getting the backlash of it because it's like uh nigga you outside the system pimp <laughs> this shit ain't gonna work well not without us mm-hmm. and then you know eventually we have to go back but let me just say this about fat asses let me just say fake cakes right i want to hear from callers right and you guys tell me your preferred cake package me personally i don't know if anybody has seen erica badu but erica badu got cakes cakes. just found this Mm -hmm. out hidden cakes i mean you gotta watch that window seat video jesus right Mm -hmm. who do you prefer right like we had some celebrities right Right, K. Michelle, because K. Michelle got a big, giant, manufactured but booty. That's fake, right? Yeah. yeah, and she bow legged. But a lot of people love a lot of people love it's um too big. Nicki Minaj. Ugh. Who you taking, Nicki Minaj or Erica Badu? Erica Badu. Right. Get to your phone lines eight four four fifty five dash one. I'm I'm putting real against fake. Who you taking, Kim K. or J Lo? Yee. Get J-Lo to your phone lines eight four four fifty five dash one. I want to just be able to just be a couch one day and just <laughs> let J Lo sit on my face. I mean, uh, uh, sit on my back. Puffy oh. caught a case over J Lo. <laughs> she doing something right. right. Ain't nobody caught no case for Kim K. 
Not yet, anyway. Kanye will soon. Phone lines are cracking. Let's get to line number five. Destiny from Maryland. You're on the voice of reason. Real or fake? Speak on it. Destiny. Destiny. Who is on line? Who is from? Destiny. He's Dustin. Is your name Dustin? (laughs) What's your name, bro? Destiny's. What's your name, bro? Line five. Speak on it. Hello? Y'all embarrassed Destiny, man. His name that was his stripper name. You know who that was? Destiny. That was our homeboy, Ronan Martin. Oh, Ronan. I blame you. How you blame me? New engineer <laughs> yeah. fucking up, man. He'll call back. Line six. Oh. Five, Indianapolis. Nobody's but name, though, because... Like, yeah, you told me line five was Destiny. Put Destiny on line six. Damn. What's wrong with you? It's my fault. It is. You <laughs> it was goddamn right. Place. Jesus. <laughs> Destiny, you're on the line. Speak to us, lady. Are you there? Destiny. Yes, hello? Oh, hey, hey girl. hi. How there you doing, go. Destiny? Hey. Okay, Destiny. Yes, this is Stephanie. Okay, Stephanie? Yes, Stephanie okay. from Maryland. I'm sorry, I'm on crutches, and I was just walking around in shoppers with the radio show all out. So? <laughs> I'm talking about white people. I didn't care. <laughs> oh God! Hey, we just having a conversation. What's up? Are you listening to this conversation? Tell me about it. I am. So the question I was trying to respond to was basically talking about how I think that white women definitely have envied as a black woman for a very long time. Uh, one of my friends she told me that she talked to a white guy, and he said that um, the thing that he loves most about black women is that they just have to be. They don't have to try. Mm. And, you know, so here in the DMV, we walk around, we go on the trains and everything, and we get a lot of stares, young people, older people, and they're just looking at us from our head to our toes. And I can just remember for as long as I can riding the Metro how much people just stared at us. I mean, to this day, it's really, really disturbing. But that's why we grow up and have this hard exterior sometimes, because we're used to being looked at as a spectacle. Or as oh, Stephanie. Product. Stephanie, can I ask you this question? Do you think, yeah. and this is a question for all of the women. Get to your phone lines, 844-55-1. Do you think women, sisters in particular, can be themselves more with white men or black men? Oof. These days? I definitely think, I think that we as black women can be ourselves more with black men. Okay. because that is our counterpart. They understand us without having to say anything. I mean, a white man... Okay, Stephanie, let me ask this. Do you, you're making a great point, so let me ask this. Who are you more pretentious with, the black man or the white man? <sighs> yeah. I would say... I would say... Black... Uh, just because, I mean, he challenges me. but that's And that's not a bad thing. I, I like the, the conflict. I think a lot of times we learn to turn away from that conflict. I mean, we have to learn how to be around each other. We're, I mean, regardless, we're two different people trying to combine our worlds or we're just trying to understand each other. But that's the beauty of it. It's, well, Stephanie, the girls in the studio yeah. have a question for you. Who do you yeah. think would appreciate you more, a black man or a white man? A black man. A black man would appreciate me more because he's been there. He's seen me struggle. He knows the different things that I go through, and I know the different things that he goes through. Each of our experiences are so unique, and he has to look at me in admiration because when I stand up for him, this just happened recently. I stood up for my man to uh, a a Caribbean cop and uh, Uncle Tom, construction worker in the 7-Eleven. And I know without even asking my man that he was proud of me. Because it's like, you know, who's going to stand up for you the best? Me. And for me, looking at him, I know that he's going to stand up for me the best. And I love that. Okay. Look, Steph, I love everything you're saying. But I'm going to have to disagree with you. Because realistically, like... I, one thing I guess I can kind of say is, in my experiences, black men, African American men don't respect black women. But I've met a gang of African men who Hold love an all Pam. natural black woman. Hold on, Pam. This is for literally, and white niggas, look, white niggas, 
<laughs> love me. They love my natural hair. They love my fro. They love when I don't wear makeup. But white all niggas. these white niggas. White I niggas. Yeah, learn, learn the term. Learn the term. <laughs> white a- niggas. Yes. White <laughs> niggas love a natural black woman. But black dudes all want a Spanish chick, a fucking Kim Kardashian, a Nicki Minaj, and an Iggy Azalea. They want that shit. They want fucking, they want Maria Cantania Rivera. They don't want fucking Tanisha or whoever the bitch's name is. Because Tanisha got it up. I think that black men want that. They want it all. I mean, that's something that I have to come to accept is that a young man, he, he likes, what did my man say? He said he likes different women. Now, of course, that I took that was like, oh, my gosh. Like, what am I going to do? I, I'm not different women. But guess what? We do have the ability to be different women. We can have our hair one way one day, and we can change it up another day and look totally different. Our counterparts think that we're different people at right. times. We like natural hair, too. I mean, I disagree with the Oh, we got the homie in the background, too. <laughs> Come on. Oh, get in there okay. and disagree, brother. Pass, pass him the mic, though. See, she got a unicorn, and that's why she got these opinions. <laughs> He is by her side right now. Yeah. Okay, let 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 him let him get it off. Let him get it off. Go ahead, brother. In response to what Whitney just said about the natural hair thing, I prefer natural hair. I mean, I I can't stand weed myself. You know, so I mean, I think that she's probably just speaking generally, and I can understand that. But me myself, I mean, I love black women. I like melanated women. Uh, nothing wrong Me with too. a Spanish woman or a red bone. They got some melanin in them, too. I really don't care for white women myself, but I don't trust them. You know what, what I'm saying? So I don't deal with white women. <laughs> but, He's you know, that's him. just me. I, I know that the great majority of us, man, black men and black women, we have kind of been infected by that, uh, that white person uh, infatuation kind of thing that's going on. And I don't know what's up with that. But me personally, uh, that's not me. I, I love black women. Um, I've had all types of problems with the black women that I've dated, but I continue to date black women. I'm not one of those people that gets my mind skewed from bad experiences and turns around like, oh, the hell with black women. But, um, you know, we got a lot of problems in our, in our, uh, in Community. our, in our culture, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, these things need to be addressed. Hey, brother, let me just say this. Let me just say this really quickly. I appreciate you guys for reaching out. That was a couple who called in and and dropped some information, man. We appreciate that. You and the sister. That shit was great. That's dope. Destiny from Maryland. We didn't didn't get the brother's name, but it's all good. But it's all good. We appreciate y'all. We got to bounce. Stephanie. Steph. He wrote Destiny. He wrote it wrong. He was thinking about cakes. That's the stripper he saw. See he knows the dest- oh, destiny. He was thinking about that. Money. <laughs> hey, no, this is this is a good conversation because I'm gonna say when it comes to beauty, somebody can argue with me on this or not. We're gonna take a quick break right after I say this. Black women, when it comes to beauty, has the lowest self esteem in the world. I'll be back to deal with that. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Good. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of reason is back in the building on Hot Button Radio. The number to dial is 844-55-1. If you're just tuning in, fake cakes are ass shots and breast augmentations becoming the death of the naturally curvy woman. Oh, the naturally thickness. I love thick women. I love them. True or false? Twerking was a ghetto black stripper thing until white teen girls Molly Cyrus uh, started doing it. False. 844-55-1. Let's speak on it. Can we speak on that? False. It was a southern turn up dance in the dirty south when you wanted to get good in the early 2000s. When you want to get good. When you wanted to have a good time and sweat your perm out, sweat your weave out, wear your back out and have a good time at a party. Specifically coming popular, sir, in the 99 and the 2000 <laughs> is when the twerking started. <laughs> Drop it. That's my shit. Like, that was a workout. That's a thigh booty workout. What you talking about? I feel like we put too much emphasis on, on twerking. I really don't think it matters one way or another oh. what race or what size ass does it. Veronica? Yeah, let me see. 
It's actually, it's far more global and international that if you look at West Africa, if you look down in the Caribbean, if you look at other indigenous cultures across the globe, people did some form of twerking. So it's not just even an American thing. We get really myopic, like it's all about America, but really that or, those origins are in our African roots. They're in the diaspora. They're, they're across the globe. Wow. Wow. That's crazy right now. The phone lines are nuts. We got to get to our callers. Let's just sit back and let them take us where we need to go. Mm-hmm. Naptown, Ronan, line five. Speak hey, up. Ronan. <laughs> hey, and Ronan, Ashanti definitely has something to say. So we're going to integrate you so and, Ashanti, and Ashanti together. Go ahead, Ron. Speak on it, Ronan. Okay. Well, I want to say attention is a very powerful currency. And as a man on the sideline, what I'm seeing is a lot of men are progressing and, and actually they're failing in the pursuit of uh, being a fetish. And the thing is, like, when I talk about the whole thing about men, mm-hmm. we're talking about substance standards. And when they have the knowledge of self, then they stand out more than anything. It doesn't matter, I mean, if they got a fat ass or, you know, breasts or anything like that. If she has knowledge herself, she stands above the rest of them because there's plenty of chicks out there who have those assets and, and are not assets at all. So. Mm. Got it. You know, Ronan, mm. you always try to come in here and one-up me. We battling now, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Stupid>. petty. <laughs> No, that's what it is, man. I love it. And, and, and the thing is, I've had guys tell me, you know, that women of other races look a lot better than black women. And this guy gave me a PowerPoint presentation as to why I should stop fucking with black women. And he failed to convince me. Wow. So, so the thing is, like, I don't find the colorism or self hatred. Once you know, you, once you know yourself, you know, you you can be copied, but then like they cannot. Overpower the original. And wow! I say our women are. Why our women are the architects of past? They need to learn to how to be architects of legacy. Wow! Of there you go. I there you go. That. That's good Say shit. That. Good looking, Ronan. Say we appreciate that. the call, man. Thanks. I wanted to ask Say Ronan that. if he dated outside of his race. Oh, you want to ask Ronan what? Mm. Yeah. If he dates outside of his what? race. Uh, um, I don't. I, I tried. Started kid, and I wasn't impressed with the uh, wet dog smell or the thing about being a fetish. Okay, Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fix it, Jesus. Damn, Gina. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> what? I want to say happy birthday to Red Panda, but fucking Seahawks. Oh, niggas ain't shit on my birthday. You gonna say that about my team? Ronan, I used to be cool oh with you, God. my guy, but now, nah, gloves are off. Cool. Got you. Okay. Bang on my team. Okay. Arana? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just wanted to shout out Ronan for pointing out what I said earlier. Confidence is king. It's about confidence. If you got confidence, that's the ultimate sexy. If you got the little booty, if you got the fat ass, if you got the real booty, fake booty, Mm -hmm. confidence make that all fly. Listen, is is black women's confidence puffed up? Is it an overcompensation for being really insecure? This is why we ask the question, it is the black woman's security can it be found in her makeup kit? Veronica. VC. I say that we, I, I, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay. I would say that given uh, the fact that she, the black woman is the least protected, hmm. the least economically supported, mm-hmm. the least propped up, the, la- the bottom of the beauty standard when you look at it globally, I would say that given that she's facing the onslaught of all of that, She's pretty cool. Mm. Oh, you look at your little boomerang. I, I see your boomerang. <laughs> you set it up and then yeah, you pull it I back. Mean, I see you. I see you, yeah, Veronica. I, I, it's true, though. It's true. I think given... Because in other words, if she were supported in the same way that her white counterpart was, if she was revered, if she was economically supported, if black, if black men invented black supremacy to protect his black woman, because that's why white supremacy was invented, was to protect the white woman from... Uh, uh, sexual infidelity outside the race. If, if black men built the institution 
to protect women, and so her self esteem would be absolutely, you know, if she was a, if she was the global beauty standard, then it would be a, a, a goal. It should be a golden cakewalk. I mean, it would be easy, but she's not, and so she copes the best way she can. But is that answered the question? I, I mean, that gave me an understanding of why it is what it is, but is what it is that black women have low self esteem? Yes or no? When it comes to beauty, can we just because no, how you heal that no. is by embracing it? This is like Alcoholics Anonymous. You got to first say you an alcoholic. You gotta say, listen, I'm addicted to blonde weaves. I'm addicted to foundation. Right? I'm addicted to whatever the white lady say is beautiful. I'm addicted to that. Ain't that how you heal? Embracing it? Yeah, I want to be quiet now. I feel like that's not everybody's problem, though, though. I think different strokes, different folks. I think I think collectively, as Veronica said, our self-esteem is always under attack and it's deflated, you know, by default. However, with the right parenting, the right people in your circle, if she feels richly supported, then she's confident. Me, myself and I, I'm a thick black chick. Always have been. And I have been the personal attack, like my girl Nicole said, of being over sexualized Mm -hmm. before I was ready. Like, you know, that's all that black femininity is about. But I had good parents that told me, hey, me and your mama slept together. And that's how you came about. You ain't shit. Don't worry about what they say. (laughs) I am the product of two parents that made it. That is all. Damn. Hate me if you want to, but I'm supposed to be here. All right. So listen, one of one of our good friends are on, you know is on the line right now. She wants to talk about this greatly. Line six, Rita G out of Houston, Texas. Rita G, what up? Hey, Rita What's up, G. What's up? H Town. Hey, hey, Rita. Arana. Yeah. Well, um, no, I can. I want to answer the last question that you asked, but before that, I just want to agree that um, authenticity is sexier than you think. You know, um, you don't need a big booty to be fine. But um, what's interesting is years ago they came out with this car that it was by Chrysler, and everybody looked at it and said it looked almost exactly like a Bentley. You know that car? There's a 300. Oh, the 300. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. right. That shit looks just like a Bentley until a real Bentley pulls up right next to you and you want to disappear. Mm. It's crazy. I I took a picture with Nicole Murphy and, and, you know, she's got the big boobs or whatever. And, you know, I don't have big breasts. They're just full and firm. Would you stop? What's wrong with Rita G? She got big titties. It, it, it looked like she had on a training bra <gasps> next to me. So the people who have that stuff, the last thing you want to do is be mm. next to and around, you, you know, the people who are, are not faking it, you know, because then you really stand out. But the thing that I was going to say is that sometimes for those people, yeah, they do find their confidence and their self-esteem in, you know, they're looking to these enhancements for that. And really, it's like... The great thing about insecurities, if there are any, is that you get to hide them. They get every people don't have to know what they are. But when you go to the extent to mutilate yourself and do all do all this extra shit, it's like putting your own insecurities on blast and then trying to act like yeah. they're not there. You know? You oh man, I like that. That's a good point, girl. We appreciate you. Sign on your forehead that says, "I don't feel that good. That I, my butt is kind of small." Wow. We appreciate you, Rita. Thank you, love. We appreciate it. Thanks, hey, reach out anytime. More, more, come on. You need more to call Rita. more often. Rita. 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 That fire. Let's go back to LA. Line three. Whitney. Oh, uh, oh another Whitney. Another Whitney. We Line three. Whitney. What up, LA? Whitney. First, I just want to say happy birthday to my family, Whitney. Oh, hey. Oh, Jesus. Uh, she got hey. a gang. We got a gang. <laughs> no, no, honestly, I'm calling in because really this subject kind of touches me because first off, I'll say I'm a white woman. I was born thick. I got a fat ass. I'm built big. I'm wide, wide hips, all of that. I've had multiple people, you know, I mean, I don't know. You are not white. What are you mixed with? What is this? Are you sure? 
Um, I've had black men and women tell me that I'm built like a black woman. So it's little things like that that I'm just like, okay, so does that automatically mean that black women are looking at me thinking anything negative? Like hmm. automatically just assume, oh, she envies us, wants to be like us. Like, because that's not the case. I love everybody. I don't discriminate. I'm an individualist. I don't really look at race and color and all that. So I guess some of the comments that have been said on air can be a little offensive to me in ways. But at the same time, coming from me, who this is how God made me. If I lacked those features, would I be looking for that? We're looking at a picture of Whitney right now in Calabasas, California, and there is definite (laughs) thicketude on this white bone and chicken right now. White bone, white white bone. Is that thick in magnitude? White bone. You should. I'm going to pull up a That's the lime green That's, uh, bikini. I got a better pick. She got the two. meat. Boy. Have her bathed and brought to my quarters <laughs> at once. <laughs> oh, ha. <huh? laughs> no, but it, she makes a She's great beautiful. point. Yeah, she makes a great point. I love hearing diverse opinions and ideas mm-hmm. and concepts. Let me just say, Whitney from L.A., thank you for hanging on. And we appreciate it. Thanks for calling us. And thanks oh. for the birthday shout out, White Wit. I love you. White Wit. <laughs> White Wit. <laughs> White Bone. Hashtag two wits. Listen, I, yeah, I've been White Wit for like. She's been White Wit for the. I've known Whitney since college, so that's just her name. I'm sorry. It's White Wit is hilarious. Slightly racist, but hey, that's yeah. kind of me. I'm half white. I can say shit like that, right? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Hey, thanks again, Whitney. We <laughs> appreciate it. We got to move on. Uh, let's go to line four, Mike. Mike, line four. Hey, what's up, Phil? Oh, what up, what's up, Mike? Mike. What's up, Mike? <laughs> uh, what's up, what's up, y'all? I ain't gonna lie, uh, shoot. Dude, I, hey, I ain't gonna lie. I, I kind of like just got on the phone, so I'm gonna kind of pick up where y'all left off. I don't know where y'all left off at, but I'm gonna try to pick up. But this is this is my opinion, and I want all y'all opinion on this. And this is my question. Cause this is my observation when I watch daytime television, and this is speaking to the the beauty and industrial complex and the beauty standard. When I watch daytime television, I always see, like, the Angie Mama, Oprah Winfrey-looking woman making it. Like, I, I turn to the view. I look at I look at Whoopi Goldberg. You saying Whoopi ain't cute? Talk, Wait, at, hold on. Uh, Are you telling me Mama, Whoopi ain't Sarah cute? You know what I'm saying? Why, why is that? How come, why they I'm asking you, Mike. 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 Exploit. Mike. I'm asking you. Are you saying Whoopi Goldberg? Is not attractive. Oh hell no! <laughs> not at all. I'm sorry. Have you ever you know, seen? I wonder how he and his offline came. <laughs> That's what just, she that's played what in she the movie. Played. Come on. <laughs> ah, no. I'm just saying. Have you seen Young <laughs> Whitney? I mean, not Whitney. Whoopi. Young Whoopi. Have you seen her? She did not look attractive on Color Purple. I'm sorry. Have you seen her? I I'm not talking about like, she's even color younger. Purple. I didn't see her before Color Purple. <laughs> yeah, so you saw her as a slave on camera, and then you going to tell us that Whoopi is. <laughs> I don't think Whoopi is attractive, though. You don't? Why Do not? you think Whoopi is attractive? I think young Whitney, uh, Whoopi was attractive. Young Whoopi was a teen mama. Somebody knocked that off. Somebody. Somebody was up on it. If I had to choose between Whoopi and Oprah, it would be Oprah. You seen young Oprah? Young Oprah, <laughs> she was in the color purple too, right? Yeah. You told Harpo to beat. Did she have? This might be completely off topic, but did Whoopi have eyebrows back in the day or not? Yeah, she, she still did. didn't have them. She had them. I mean, I know it's off topic. I just need to. A nigga needs to know. Okay. Is it on Wikipedia? <laughs> Can we Google the eyebrows? Fuck her we ass. Eyebrows. I don't want to care about her booty. Did she have eyebrows? You guys are stupid. <laughs> that need its own Wikipedia page. That's actually a good That's question. Hilarious. Hey, Mike, That's go hilarious. ahead. Finish your point, Mike. I said, is that a good question? Like, how come daytime television doesn't want to exploit black beauty and seductive women like Miss, like, uh, like Whitney or Shanti or like Claudia Joy looking women? Like, you never see them, even on commercials. Like, you got the pound store lady. She's ugly as shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's because she cleaning a toilet. That's because she cleaning a toilet. Nah, she ugly. Listen, that's because she cleaning a toilet. They not gonna put no dime in the in the bathroom scrubbing a commode. Tyra had a show. 
Ty- that's what I was going to say. What about Tyra? Tyra's the, pretty. The real with Tamar. But what he's speaking to. I hear what he's saying. Yeah. He the stereotype. About. Girl, get your hat man. Get your ass in there and clean the toilet. The mammy archetype yeah. versus the Jezebel. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Veronica, you know I'm on your team, girl. Listen. <laughs> 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 hey, listen. No, but that that's that's the reason why we always on the on guard about our sexuality, our defense, because we don't they don't know how to deal with us in between bitches. You know, you got to be full on mammy or you got to be just full on the slut. You know, it, it's hard for us to walk that line if you're in the in between. Ladies. Full on mammy or full on slut. We've yeah. got work for both of you. <laughs> you in between bitches, the mammy slut. You, there's no work. Hey, it's them crazy. lines is full. Okay, <laughs> look at the cast and break down. Well, and even Halle Berry had to uh, be, you know, like mm-hmm. hypersexualized on screen to win an Oscar. Like they they couldn't just make her can't couldn't win an Oscar for something that was. Just a straight, you know, where she was playing a straight character. Well, let me Aaron ask you. Brockovich. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What what role that Halle played that's Oscar worthy other than that one? Dorothy Dandridge. No. Sorry. Babs. Queen. Babs was Babs. a good movie. Babs was horrible. I you love Babs. really? I love you gonna Babs. say Babs? Babs. <laughs> she did her thing though. <laughs> I could have played that. Hey, that's my hey. shit. Shout out to Ra- uh, but see, but Robert see, Townsend. if you look at, if you go back and you really look at the situation, Monsters Ball was the Oscar caliber film. She couldn't have won fucking an Oscar for Catwoman. Nah, not what is what? Woman. What else? You can't say Babs. Nobody could. It, no. Storyline wise, well, Monsters Ball was, was the, you know provoking. It was good. What about the scary one where where her chubby husband she killed that nigga. Oh, Holly Berry, that one. Gothica, that shit was good. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Dorothy Dandridge for the win. Yeah, uh, nah. <laughs> I didn't see that one. And then Nah came up. <laughs> and then Nah. <laughs> and then comes Nah. <laughs> and then Nah was said. And, and then Nah was said. <laughs> right. Nah. Come on. Let's go to Houston. Line five. Joe, you're on the line. Speak on it, bro. What's up, fam? What's happening, man? Hey, Joe. Uh, I'll say losing Isaiah first. Losing yes, Isaiah. Yes, that yes, that was that's the film. one. That was a good one. But that's not Oscar one. worthy. Sorry. Ooh, that was good. The crackhead okay. in Jungle Feet. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm sorry. When it comes to the beauty part, I think uh, the sisters seem to have too many options because y'all, everybody else has one standard of beauty. Black women have multiple standards. So you know, sometimes you get a woman options. She can't really, it takes her a while to catch up. But on the flip side, I think that at the end of the day, we are desensitized to our own attractiveness. See, mm. when we see people of other races on TV, oh, they, mm. they, when we mm. see normal people of that race in regular life, I'm like, damn, they ugly. But that ain't the same with us. We see fine people all the time. Mm. That's interesting. That's a very interesting point. Very. It's like Arana has a, a a point. Yeah, it's like gifted people. When people are gifted, they're not aware of how gifted they are until they get around non gifted people. Right. Get your retarded ass. No, <laughs> you're the one with the helmet on. Gifted. <laughs> <laughs> not special. <Hilarious. laughs> gifted. <laughs> but when you always Hilarious. have something, you always have it, so you become unaware of. Lack. Mm-hmm. It's the people who lack who become envious, and they make you. They create the discord because they're they're the ones that want what you always have. You know what it is. Let me just. Can we just keep it real? Black women are dreaming somebody else's dream. Yep. It's like yep. Somebody is asleep, but black women and men are dreaming their dreams. And that's why you don't know what beauty is to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Because you're dreaming somebody else's dream. You own some other shit. You you can't even go to sleep. Right? And when you go to sleep, Mm -hmm. when you dream, you're dreaming what they're dreaming. And that's what fucks you up all the time. Like... Yep. Th- this is my this is my daughter. Yes, you could say that something after I say this. This is my little baby girl. I remember when she was in the seventh grade. Dad was like, "Here's one hundred and fifty dollars. We're gonna have this girl 
braid your hair, but it's going to be the African braids. You know, the real intricate, beautiful, you know, we did it one time and poor baby, she was sleepy, you know, it was hours. She had red eyes, all of that. It was hours later, hair was done. She never got her hair braided like that again. She doesn't want to. She's like, I don't like the African look, daddy. We're like, uh, babe, but dad is a revolutionary. <laughs> we got to look the part, honey. Uh, nigga, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's 16 now. She's a sophomore in high school. She'll be 16, but she's a sophomore and it's like she does her own thing. And I just see her being influenced. You feel what I'm saying? Like television and mm -hmm. the standards. And it's like dad will come in with a dashiki on and she'll be like, ah, nigga, what you doing? <laughs> but I will say this. One day, a friend of mine who has a T-shirt company and this gave me hope. He sent me a T-shirt for a girl. It was a white tee and it just had this black bar across the chest. And beneath that were the words, is beautiful. Oh, that's cute. And so mm. she was like, dad, give mm. me that. Yoink. <laughs> she was like, give me that. And and she's real cautious around white folk in the sense of, I can't wear the gold Egyptian scarab at school. No, they won't understand dad. <laughs> you know, she's real like, and I'm like, damn, how do I get her to break out of that? But do I want her to break out of it? You know, I ask these questions sometimes. Like, do I want her to put that on her shoulders? Because she obviously can't handle it. Her brother, on the other hand, is gangbanging with it. <laughs> but she's not. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, maybe she has to mature and grow into it. It's one thing I know I can't do is force her to be on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when she grabbed that shirt. And put that on. She was like, yep, I can rock this. I was I was cool with it. See, the thing is, though, when you discover that there's boundaries about something, it kind of gives you perspective. See, right now, the fact that you're not forcing her to do it is good because eventually it'll allow her to find her own way. If she kind of wants to wear it, but she knows she can't because they don't understand it might take her some time to process that, but she'll probably get to a place where she'll wear it in defiance because she knows exactly what she's doing. And that's kind of what you wanted to do. You wanted to be able to have the choice. She's a trip because you know? she's an artist. I'm going to go to you, Ashanti. She's a trip. She's an artist. And she knows she's, she's been around me for years. I remember I was there her whole life, basically. And I remember uh, when she was three in um, daycare, her teacher called and was like, man, your influence on your daughter is profound. I said, well, I, well, what does she do? She was just sitting in here telling us that, you know, God is bigger than the Bible and we shouldn't be following Jesus. And mm -hmm. she was three, right? But as she got older, this weird art in her, her perspectives are, are crazy. So she's like, uh, dad, I'm going to be going to church. I, what? You going to church now? Anybody know me? No, I don't get down. She was like, "That well, what? You going to church?" She was like, "Uh, yes, because I like gospel. Hmm. I don't believe in any of the doctrine, but I like the music." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she's way out, man. So it's like I can't force or push her. And now we're moving into this kind of culture where everything's this big gumbo, right? And people are picking and choosing from cultures from all over the world, and like creating their own little mosaic, you know, that represents themselves. Ashanti? Um, earlier you were talking about how your daughter is conscious of the clothes that she wears around the people that she wears them around. Mm -hmm. um, I almost would challenge that and say I think it's better to be more aware of what to wear and what to say and how to act depending on who you're around. I think it's easier to break barriers that way. For example, I work around white people all day, every day, and it has been that way probably my entire life. Anytime I get too ethnic, like I can't wait to walk into work next week with this hairdo. Anytime I get too ethnic or wear anything that stands for too much, it's this awkward tension between us that at the end of the day, 
is unnecessary. At the end of the day, I always feel like I just wish I would. Who even does she think shit. she is? Blade yeah. Runner. So <laughs> it's sad. No, exactly. Don't it's back. sad, but I feel like you can break more barriers if you understand how to act and what to wear around certain kind of people. I say wear whatever the fuck you want to wear. If you got to wear a fake ass You're going to lose your job, Whitney. Okay, and I'll get a new job. I'm just like, hey, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. If I'm going to come in here with some Rick James apparently twisted ass braids and these white <laughs> people are uncomfortable, I'm sorry. My whole culture has been uncomfortable dealing with y'all niggas stealing us from our motherland. So why don't you just chill out for 10 minutes while I walk in here with my braids and my patchouli oil or whatever the fuck else I'm doing. No, and it's it's 150%. Everybody (laughs) in my family, though, that has really made it, like really made it and has that real money, Mm -hmm. they're black at home. They're black around their friends. They're They're black black all the time. But when it comes to going to work, they're going to look and sound like everybody else. These niggas said they black at home. They black at home. I've had enough. <laughs> I think your daughter on track, personally. It sounds like she is going through what teenagers go through. She's finding her way, and she's experimenting. I mean, that's the beauty of being where you at. You can play with the boundaries to find out who you want to be. But if she's getting the right coaching from dad, well, she you, hate the, you hate the gospel, but train up a child in the way that they shall go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. So she going to be oh, revolutionary because you've you. planted those seeds into her spirit let the church say amen Amen. if you plant the seeds in the child the child will grow up to be a revolutionary yes 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 okay you got to know what you don't like you got to know what you do like and Mm -hmm. that way you can come up you can't grow up to say fuck the police until you know the wrongs that the police have done oh Yes, yes, motivation yes. is not enough. No. You cannot deal with motivation alone. She may want to change the world. She may want to be revolutionary, but she yes. needs to be educated first. Yes, sir. she needs to have experience first. Hot Don't bo- bo- rob bo- that bo- child bo- of her bo- experience. Bo- Don't yes. rob of her education. Yes, sir. she gonna be somebody. Indeed, indeed. Yes, shout out to both pie, 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 pies, love that chicken. Okay, here we go. I got a feeling everything gonna be all right. The shikis and ass shots is gonna make the booty tight. Oh. Booty tight, booty tight. Booty we just tight. needed a quick praise break right there. That's all. Uh, she'll be fine. Listen, <laughs> this shit is crazy. But I will say this she is well aware of herself. Her beauty, like she knows, like, hey, you know, I'm I'm the shit. You know, she's very confident. You know, she's one thing I, I really love about her is she really thinks she has me on a leash. She be like, listen, dad, you can't come to after or what is it back to school? I said, why not? Because you're going to intimidate everybody. She was like, what I want <laughs> is to be able to direct you in that intimidation. When I need you to intimidate people, then I'll call you. Right now, this is just them talking to us about the syllabus. You don't get to come. (laughs) Your daughter talked to you like Mr. Burns, though? Oh, she's hysterical, (laughs) right? She's funny. Anyway, we got callers. We got to get to them. This shit is crazy. Let's go to line six. Hustle, fat ass or fake ass, what's your preference? (laughs) Oh, man. Hustle. I want to say Arona just took us to church for a minute. Now. Yes, she did. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So what's up, Ashanti, Mr. V? Hey, Hustle. Hey, hey. Hey, Hustle. Hey. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday, Jeannie. So, Whitney, happy birthday, so, Hustle. Thanks, Hustle. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was listening to Neely Fuller Jr. this week, and he said something kind of profound. He, he told me, Never ask for respect. Ooh. Basically, yeah, he's saying cool. that respect comes from within. To him, self-respect is the only respect. So, it's kind of like what you said with command and demand. Yep. Women who go ahead and go get those augmentations, it's kind of like they're demanding respect. Ooh. And they're taking the outside route to get it. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? All Basically, right. you ain't giving me no attention with how I'm built right now, but I bet you if I go drop a stack on this doctor, you're going to start paying attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of mm-hmm. how they yeah. go on the back. 
I'll smoke a bag of that. When it comes to me, you, you asked the question what I like. I like balance. I'm an artist, so I like seeing proportion and and what's it called? Uh, symmetry. So yes. when I see somebody looking off balance and unnatural, it turns me off personally. I mean, hmm. women yeah. with big parts out here, they only get participation ribbons in my opinion. Some people would say, Hustle, some people would say the people who get those fake butts and they really blow them up, some people would say they're not really imitating black women. We were on Periscope earlier today. The brother said they were imitating insects, (laughs) particularly the the black ant with the fat butt and the real skinny legs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) To me, like an ant body. Like for me, like who who got it the the worst? I think it's uh, Chloe. Have you seen Chloe's ass? I, I like. I thought like Chloe's body was natural. I, me too. No. I like her Y'all body. Are tripping. Mm-hmm. Chloe no. Kardashians. Nick, listen. They body shame Chloe too. Chloe. Well, that's what I'm saying. But she should she be shamed. Walk. She's walking around on a lollipop. <laughs> it just, just doesn't work. look right. I feel like she yeah. was built like a Clydesdale from the jump. So her fake ass mm-hmm. actually low key kind of matches her big ass legs. No, yeah. she has skinny I legs. Like Chloe. Well, fuck, I guess I'm not looking at the right picture. Right. I, thought, wow. I thought Chloe's was real. I thought Kim's was fake. No, Chloe's ass is fake, now I gotta too. gotta look. I feel yeah. like if you want to see what the Kardashian sisters will really look like, you gotta look at the other sister who hasn't had any work Kendall? done. Kendall? No, not Kendall. Not Kendall Kylie. Kylie Courtney. The other, Courtney. Does Courtney have a unibrow? You know what's funny Kylie. about this, though? Oh, go ahead, Hustle. Funny? The fact that it's been so long since we've been seeing natural built women, they actually think fake look. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's, that's true. Well, yeah. I mean, Zoe, you understand this. You remember Flo Jo? Oh, yes. Florence Joyner Griffin. Oh, nah. Jesus. Now, that's a naturally built woman. Your legs got to support what's standing on top of it. You mm-hmm. better say that. Flo Jo was you fine, man. Don't stand out to any. What they say? Real recognize real? Yeah. When you're around real all the time, you're going to spot that from a lot of I mean, got to match. Wow. Hey, man, I appreciate you, Hustle. Every week you give us good insight, man. We appreciate the call. Thanks, homeboy. Let me just say this. Could the Kardashians be the plastic surgery equivalent to the Jacksons? Mm. Ain't just one motherfucker in there getting shit done. They keeping up with each other so they can stay looking alike. You talking about the Jacksons? <laughs> I'm saying the Kardashians, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah, all the Jacksons look like Michael. Everybody. They had to. Because this... I'm, if, I'm, if, if, we don't, if we don't keep up with him, we ain't going to look alike no more. That's hilarious. See, Michael went overboard. I feel like everybody else was cool. Ooh, except ah, for that one sister. LaToya. Ooh. LaToya. She looked like Skeletor, mm-hmm. bro. <laughs> she went a little far with her shit. Have you guys... This is what I want to see. Lil' Kim. This is call to action. This is what I want to see. Ooh. People on Twitter, go find an original picture of Latoya Jackson. Oh, good luck. Latoya had Scorching. the Michael Muffin nose like Mike. Mm-hmm. She had the muffin top. <laughs> and she was cute back then. <laughs> but then she started going too far. Now people are praising Janet. Oh, this is what 50 looks like. No, this is what surgery on a 50 year old looks like no disrespect to janet i mean jesus do you think do you, do you think jada had work done who jada jada yeah. pinkett of course her cheekbones have you seen the them cheekbones yeah it's like shoulder pads on her face man listen i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> i didn't mean to did i, I say love that? her too but Fuck. yeah i, I mean she, she's awesome but it ain't the same it's a real strong ass serious gotham kind of face yeah hmm. Them abs on fleek, though. <laughs> Shout out to Jada for them abs. She looks you, good to You me. can buy those, too, guys. I'm just saying. You can get ab implants, guys. Oh, my God. I'm just saying. Is I don't she, think she had those, though. She always kind of had a nice... I'm not saying that she does. I'm just letting you know you can get it done. Telling us what the streets got. The streets got them. Slossing <laughs> for the low. I'm just saying. Slossing for get the a, low. You can get everything from Slossing. I'm just saying. Listen, let me do this really quickly. We've got a couple more callers. Line three. L.A., you're on. Speak to us about this whole beauty thing and standards and big ass and little ass and fake ass and real ass and soft ass and hard asses. Go ahead. Hey, y'all. Hey. hey what is up? this? This is Nikkei. Hey, Nikkei. Sure. How you doing, 
I'm good, <laughs> baby boo. This shit sound hella okay. delicious right now. Okay, finish what you had to say, honey. <laughs> Listen, if we were talking about heterosexual men, um, talk, you know, they were talking about what the beauty standards was, we wouldn't be talking about this because heterosexual men don't care. They take them from 8 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy. Mm, that's you a good got point. To ask yourself, they don't care. They don't care if you got cellulite. They don't care if you got three teeth in your mouth. They don't care if you go to the gym every day. They don't care. Wow. That's real. That's a good point. That's a good point. Who controls the fashion industry? <sighs> Listen, you go all over the world. Thank you, Nikkei. We appreciate the call. Thanks, Thank Nikkei. you for bringing another member of Los Angeles into the building. Let me just say this. We've talked about this before. You go to the Philippines. The real people from the Philippines is black. Mm-hmm. You go to China, you go into mm-hmm. China, real people from China, black. You go to India, real mm-hmm. folk from India, black, right? You go all over the world, you start seeing that every country has a racial PR person. Yeah. Right? So when you you go to Brazil, you know Brazil is black. That's those black people down there. But mm-hmm. when they get into that Miss America or Miss Universe or Miss whoever... You see a different representation. Remember, the people from the Philippines stood up like, hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Who is this person that y'all have representing the Philippine, right? The Philippine nation. Who is this person? Because she doesn't look like the rest of us. Right. They they pushed back against that. So at, at the end of the day, when we start looking at these big asses, I'm sure Michelle K's ass was already big. Mm-hmm. Before she went to the doctor. Don't you think? It looked like it. She got a kindergarten class on the back of her back. <laughs> that shit is outstretched and outworked. I'm just saying. So <laughs> now is now the question becomes, why are we doing this? Why it does it make her more attractive, do you think? No. I don't think. K Michelle is who I'm talking about. I know Kay I don't Michelle think. is like four feet with a big ass, a big disgusting over the top ass. But she guys like it. She looks like me. a donkey, bro. <laughs> she much. looks like a fucking donkey. Let's just be. I guess we have to ask why do she women do like it? She looks like an ass. If you can't twerk with it without breaking your knees, Damn. you don't let her need it. Well, this I is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I'm gonna start. With Ashanti. Mm. Ashanti, give us your summation of today's topic. Beauty. Man. Fake ass, real ass. I think natural women should just start a revolution of their own. You know, let let these fake bitches do what fake bitches do. Mm. But for those that want to be real, for those that want to be authentic, you are beautiful too. And there is a place for you. Okay. Uh, Wizard of Oz. I had to do that because you guys play the music. Good Witch of the West. There is a place for you. What kind of beauty pageant response? Uh, (laughs) I love it. Fuck it. it. uh, Whitney. Look, too many of you. Look, I'm just saying, brothers, y'all are sitting here expecting every bitch in America to have a fat ass. But none of y'all niggas even got big dicks. So why don't y'all just chill out a little bit? What's she talking about? Hey, I'm just being 1,000. But realistically, nah. Like, just I'll rob a bank with my dick. Be, oh God, of course, Zoe. <laughs> my thing is, just be you. Like, who cares? Like Ashanti said, there's a place for everybody. And I'm sorry. I don't care if big titties is out. They still in in my book. So all y'all big booty, fake, weird, lumpy asses can have all that shit. I'm out. <laughs> Arana. At the end of the day. <laughs> You know, if at the end of the day, at the end, you just got to appreciate yourself because imitation is the highest form of flattery. So if people want to be like you, that just means you're doing something right. And all big asses, little asses, everything is cool. But the gift of gab is what's most important, because at the end of the day, if I can talk that slick shit to you, I can get whatever I want. Wow. Wow. That's good (laughs) shit. Veronica. Um, I just think it's, you know, I think this is an opportunity to fall in love with blackness again. Mm. I think that we're at a really interesting time in history. I think we are in the middle of sort of a revolution, of a cultural revolution of sorts. I think, I think people are seeing black as beautiful again. I think you're seeing a lot more sort of cultural uh, reverence uh, in the beauty standard. People are really, so I think it's time to kind of have that resurgence of black as beautiful now. It's time is now. 
Wow. Do you think we can do it without being mad at other people? We got a black president. We can do what we want for like four more months. <laughs> Like four more months. Four more months. And then We've a had a black president for damn near eight years, and we ain't been able to do whatever the fuck we want to do in the past shit. eight years. Swag been it in, though. <laughs> Swag been in. So here's my summation about the fake ass, real ass. I, unless there's some type of medical shit going on where your ass needs bionics, I don't think you should get any augmentation. Because to me, it points directly to something inner that you're trying to fix on the outside. Point in case. Little Kim was beautiful. Come on now. Little Kim was, that was a pretty little girl. Talk to him, though. Right? Now this motherfucker looks like (laughs) some type of mutant Muppet that has escaped from Jim Henson's workshop and just... Claim the spirit of Little Kim. I don't know what the fuck is going on. This is a goddamn science project. This is a, a, a Negro Annabelle. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, there's beauty is always it. Uh, listen, beauty, happiness, truth, love, all that shit starts inside. Sometimes the the way America has us, you know, structured, man, ideologically. We're always on the pursuit of some shit outside. It's an inside job. Everything's an inside job. And until we recognize that, we're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to not look like our daddy. Ooh. Right? So. I'm just saying. That's what Mike did. He didn't want to look like Joe. Mm. Is, you understand what I'm saying? Let them chew on that a little bit. That shit is for real. So with that said, <laughs> hey, go get that book, The Relationship Dismount, imzowilliams.com. Please go get it right now. If you buy it today, I shall mail it out tomorrow. Look at fucking, oh, don't show me. No more pictures of Lil' Kim. Jesus. Please go purchase that book. Support the movement. Uh, it, that's the paperback version at my website, imzowilliams.com. Or go to Kindle, Amazon, and get it. It's there. We appreciate you guys, and maybe next oh, Monday we'll be back with another hot topic. Hot Button Radio, Dash Radio, Voice of Reason, we out.